All right, hello, wine drinking people. We're back with South African wine. Well, you know, we probably need to do a vintage report on South Africa. You know, I think Buster Jameson's been down there for the last two months. We should probably check in with him to see just how the vintage 2011's going. As you know, the harvest has happened, and uh, right now we're in the middle of uh, the summertime for the uh, Northern Hemisphere, which means Eurasian, and two weeks ahead of time, I think, in Burgundy. Uh, so things look good there. But, uh, hey, South Africa, they're making some pretty good wines here, you know. And uh, this is the first time I've tasted with Carlos. He's got a company that specializes in South African wine. Unfortunately, uh, he's got a rough road ahead of him, man. <laughs> you know, I mean, they're starting to make good wines from South Africa. But, you know, fine wine drinkers not avidly looking for South African wines, the finer things there. So, you know, he's really got a lot of education to do. And the first wine he busted out of his bag was a Pinotage. So the first education I gave Carlos was, we don't drink no stinking Pinotage here at the Wine Watch, okay? And, uh, you know, life is just too short for inferior varietals. Some crazy nutcase crossed Pinot Noir and Cinso in South Africa and came up with this Pinotage grape, and then they stanked the flag of South Africa on it and said, this is South African, mate! And it really isn't very good. You know, they make some good, great wines from Syrah and Cabernet, Bordeaux varietals, even really nice Chardonnays and Pinot Noirs. But uh, let's get rid of the Pinotage, please. All right, the first wine we had from Morgenhoff Estate in Stellenbosch. Uh, lovely Bordeaux blend here. Black earth, a note of barnyard, cigar box spice, uh, tar, kind of asphalt, bittersweet chocolate uh, to the black cherry and cassis berry fruit on the nose. Really quite complex there. Big and chewy on the tongue as well with some mature notes. This was 2001 vintage. Wow, I kept looking at the label going... Man, I expected it to be a more current release because the wine still had lovely freshness and lovely fruit here. Seemed like it would go another 10 years in your cellar. Big and chewy on the tongue. Mature notes, though, showing up on the finish there. But uh, a lot of fresh fruit, lovely balance, excellent juice for $37.50, worth every penny, in my opinion. All right, Post House Merlot from Stellenbosch. And I think I've had this wine before. It seemed familiar, but uh, my little brother did a film called Post House. He's in the post-house production kind of business. He's an uh, editor. And uh, this wine had a good amount of plum and dark cherry fruit with fine herbs and notes of peppery spice, sweet tobacco there as well. A good amount of that ripe black plum cherry showing up on the palate. Round and smooth, one of the hallmarks of Merlot, more in the front of your palate. And that herbaceousness showing there also with some dark spices on the finish. Excellent bottle of Merlot. Wow. I take back everything I said about South African wines. Okay. Well, uh, next up, we've got a tasting with another good friend uh, from the wine business, Flora Springs Winery. Well, actually, another good friend winery. I've never met Paul Patron before this tasting. <laughs> 